Hey, Ephraim, how are you? Excellent. Uh, how you doing, what, Gary? Doing good, doing good. Wanted to talk to you a little bit about what you're facing this season um, with the targeting calls, uh, particularly with um, Amari and just trying to, I, I assume you guys are working in practice every week on, on his tackling technique and, and trying to keep him away from that. Can you just elaborate on what that's, you know, been like over the last several weeks and, and, and you know, your viewpoint on where all of that stands? Yeah. I mean, first off, it's not what I'm dealing with. I think this is all, this is a um, kind of a thing across all of college football right now. You see it in every game. You can watch a noon game. You can watch an eight o'clock game. You can watch the ones in between and you're seeing it across the board. Uh, I think there's a conservative effort to make the call. Um, personally, I, I know that we're working really, really hard at, and always have worked really, really hard at targeting in the strike zone. You got to understand we're a shoulder leverage tackling team that is aimed at attacking the thigh board of a man. Um, we've never been a, like in our tackling, there is nothing above the waistline, you know, how we teach it, you know, when you talk about the techniques and the hawk tackle and, and the cane tackle. Um, it's definitely been uh, a, a challenge um, f for us and for Amari. I think the last week was a tough one. I mean, uh, I, I remember the young man coming out of St. Thomas that he hit. He's a 5'8 receiver who's a good receiver. He's an 18 class. He's from St. Thomas Aquinas. You know, he catches the ball and he ducks. And I think it's really hard uh, to, to officiate for the officials. I think it's hard for us to coach it. You know, when a receiver catches the ball who's 5'8 and then ducks, you know, how, how do you make a human being respond that fast? We could be better. I, I agree. Our head could be up. Our eyes can be higher um, on that play. But you still can't make a human like shrink that much and then have another human shrink that much in that quick of time. Um, personally, I <clears throat> definitely feel like, you know, it shouldn't warrant a young man being thrown out if it's not like if it's malicious, I understand completely. Like if he's intending to throw the head or, you know, not trying to target low, uh, I definitely feel like that's a cause for a young man to be, you know, ejected for a game. I don't believe it should be ejected for the game if it's, if a young man's trying. And here's my reasoning. Okay. In my personal opinion, not opinion, I know Amari Carter is a good young man. He's not maliciously trying to do that. Two, I don't feel it's fair to take a senior who has a limited amount of time to play football out of a game. Three, add 2020 to it. Everything that these young men have had to do to get onto a football field from the, from March through the summer, you know, de dealing with COVID, all the different things they've had to sacrifice to, to get on the college football field um, for themselves, for their family, for their, for, for college football, for fans. I think, I think it's, in my opinion, I feel like that's not the right thing to do is to take a kid off the field when he's not, you know, he's not doing it, you know, on purpose and taking away a young man's time on the field in 2020 with everything that these college football players have had to go through. I think that's very unfair in my opinion, but the rules, the rule, we're going to continue to try to improve and work at it um, and try to get better at it. Uh, I know it's hard on the officials, uh, 100%. We've talked to them. They know it's hard. They, they don't, you know, they struggle with it too. Um, but I do feel like hopefully in the off season, we can, as coaches, whether I'm an offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator or head coach, we can find a way to try to help this rule, uh, make, or make this rule better so that we're not taking away from these kids and all their hard work and their right to play because, they put a lot of work in. They sacrificed a lot in 2020. I don't think the right thing to do is take them off the field if they're not intending to do it, bottom line. Thank you. Coach, we've got David Lake from Inside the U. David? Yeah, Coach, I have more like a big picture midseason question for you. I guess, you know, every year the defense has a new identity, personality, et cetera. Um, what, what do you like just in general so far halfway through this season about your guys' defense? Uh, I think the best thing or the thing that I, we all agree, uh, that we really, really are pleased with is that we're running and we're hitting. Um, we are, we've made a big emphasis, um, when we were stuck in our, 
you know, rooms back in, in self-isolation period till now to really refocus on just running to the ball and hitting. Uh, something that we had done when we first walked in here with Coach Diaz as a coordinator, uh, you know, almost five years ago now. So I, I'm really, really pleased to see that. I thought we could have been a lot better on that in the, you know, last week versus UVA. I kind of felt like we, you know, we, we, we didn't do it to the standard that we had been doing it all year. Um, so as an identity, I'm really uh, pleased to see that part of our defense um, and our kids really take note of that and make that an emphasis um, from our front to our linebackers, to our secondary. We're not always right. You know, we have a lot to improve on. We've talked a lot about that during this little uh, pit stop uh, of, a, of a race right now. But what we are pleased with is our toughness from all different levels of running to the ball and tackling. Coach, we've got David Ferronis from the Sun Sentinel. David, go ahead. Hey, Coach. I uh, just want to ask about uh, the development of the freshman, uh, Brian Balaam. Obviously, we see him get in there uh, out of necessity against Clemson. Jalen Harrell, we see him uh, get in there a little bit out of necessity last week. And also Keyshawn Washington, just uh, their development. Um, uh, we've seen a very small sample size, but uh, then behind the scenes. Yeah, you know, uh, Brian's done a really, really good job um, of just preparing every week. Um, his ability to take what I space what we say in a meeting room and go apply it on the football field as soon as it happens on the field uh, is is rare. Um, he, he's really good at that. I thought the times he's got in games, he's made freshman mistakes, which we all knew he'd make. But what we really enjoyed, you know, when he makes those mistakes is seeing him run and tackle, uh, which for us is is a big thing. They're going to make mistakes. I, everyone thinks, oh, play the freshman and everything's going to be OK. The problem with playing freshmen is they're going to make freshman mistakes. But to see a freshman go and tackle and run and, and be urgent, uh, he's been extremely good on special teams for Coach Packey and Coach Diaz. Um, Jalen got an opportunity. I told him, I said, look, son, your chance is going to come. Just wait. Keep staying, you know, stay locked in, stay urgent. He got his opportunity. He was going to play a lot on special teams, and all of a sudden he's playing on defense because, you know, we had issues. Uh, and all of a sudden he's out there and same thing. He didn't do what he was supposed to do exactly right. But when the ball was snapped and it was thrown, it was time to just run and hit. He ran and hit, made a couple tackles. Uh, was he correct in his techniques, his eyes, all that? No. But number one thing we talked about is just running and tackling. And I told him you keep doing that. Good things will happen for you. Keyshawn has done an excellent job as well of staying locked in. Uh, you know, we test those guys because Diaz. Nowadays, there's a chance you could always play. And we test those guys every uh, evening before games. And Keyshawn has been locked in with the game plan, uh, really practicing hard, staying locked in on third down, looking for opportunities on special teams for Coach Packey as well. I thought Jalen Harrell went in there and, and, and uh, hit a 20-mile-per-hour uh, mark for Coach Packey on kickoff. Um, so those are all positives, good signs uh, that they got. They're trying to find a way to help this team in any way. Attitude has been phenomenal. Uh, Avante's you know, attitude off the field has been really good in terms of just trying to stay engaged, but, you know, handle his academics and, and get stronger as well. Great. Coach, we've got time for a few more. We're going to go to Gabby Arutia from Inside the U. Gabby? Hey, Coach. I just wanted to ask kind of like a general, like, recruiting question. Um, obviously, you guys missed out on, like, that spring and summer evaluation period where you'd be able to go out and see, you know, a bunch of different guys. Um, now that you guys are kind of having a chance to go through the tape, is there anything like specific that you guys are looking for, like throughout this evaluation, especially for defensive backs where you're so in, kind, of, like, kind of like involved in that aspect of it? And is, is specifically, is there any characteristics that you're looking for in players, cornerbacks, safeties uh, to kind of complement like the three guys that you guys already have in, in this 2021 class? Um, definitely been a, a challenge, uh, not being able to get out when you recruit South Florida, um, it's all about getting into every school and not just the big name schools that we all know, because I remember when Elijah Roberts, you know, started at Curl Park, you know, and then transferred and all of a sudden things happen. But you got to know about Elijah Roberts when he's at Curl Park. Like, you know, it, it's one of those things that that's how recruiting works down here. And that's why you got to, you can't just put one coach down in South Florida, one in Dade or, you know, and try to have them take all three counties because it's impossible to really, really know where they're all at. So it's definitely been a challenge, but I think our, um, our, our footprint and our design of recruiting the state or recruiting, you know, South Florida and the Tri-County area is really, uh, in my opinion, bold well. The fact that we've already been doing this for a long time, so we know where the kids are. 
we kind of got a head start on all the young ones because we've been in the schools for so many years now. Uh, I think we're going to benefit from that. We uh, we know a lot about them. It's definitely the the twenty twos that are that are going to be, um, you know, that's that's, that's going to be the challenge because you're not going to be able to get out there. But I, uh, our relationship with the high school coaches has helped because we're getting text messages, we're getting the huddle links, we're getting updates, you know, from our contacts uh, out there, you know, on the ground, the, the ones that are with the kids. Uh, in terms of what we're looking for, um, bottom line is, you know, we're looking for people that, first off, they got to really want to be at Miami because being at Miami is hard. It's not easy. Uh, it's hard when you're six and seven, and it's hard when you're five and one. It doesn't matter. It's always going to be hard to be at Miami. The, the stress uh, that the media, the social media, the fans, that all the outside world, it, it, it's not easy to be here and it can wear on you. So we got to find the right person ment mentally wise in terms of, uh, you know, physical traits or people we're looking for, definitely looking for people who can make plays. And if you make them on, you know, on the South Florida high school scene or in the state, then you could make them here. You know, it, it's a highly competitive deal. You know, you know me when it comes to safeties, um, I like, I like guys who have a natural feel for the game. Um, young men that have some instincts, that show toughness, um, that, that show leadership um, and length. That's always good. But look, in the day, Jaquan Johnson didn't wasn't the longest or the fastest, but he had great instincts, and he's one of the best safeties ever played in Miami. Um, in terms of corner, you know, we're definitely looking. We're looking for what everyone's looking for. You know, obviously looking for length and guys who can really cover, who can or quick twitched. Um, you know, that, that that are competitive. You got to be competitive because we're going to play man coverage here at Miami. Um, you know, if you're not a competitive guy and you just want to hide behind your stars and, and, and you, you know, and yeah, you ran a good 40 at some combine and that's all great. But if you don't want to get on the grass and compete and actually, you know, get after it, none of that matters. You know, it won't matter. And because not only will it not matter on the field, but there's going to be some guys, young, young corners or whatever, it, do, it does matter. So competitive, long, uh, athletic, they, could, they don't have to always be long. They could be like TC, you know, TC. Is not the longest, but he's super competitive and quick twitched. Uh, but that's the biggest thing: competitive kids that really want to get after it, uh, and they can handle playing at Miami. Because, like I said, six and seven or five and one, still hard to be at Miami. Thank you. We got two more. We got two more for you. We're going to go to Manny Navarro at the Athletic. Manny, hey, Coach Banda. Um, hey, want to ask? I want to ask you about uh, Gervin, because uh, I know Coach talked about how much toughness he showed kind of going back out there on Saturday after he, he, he went out there late in the first half. Uh, how's his health? And I guess to his point, you know, how has, has his play been? And then also with Bubba, I mean, I know he's played great for you guys this year and, and twice ACC Player of the Week, but what areas are you still hoping to see growth from him individually? You know, start with Gervin. It was nice. You know, Gervin's put together two back-to-back -back really solid games, uh, really really good games. Uh, he kind of had a little bit of an hockey start uh, with the targeting and then just dealing with an ankle deal. Um, he, he's, he's, he's really, I was really proud of him. He gutted it out. I mean, it got a little hairy there. Obviously you guys saw it. Um, I was really proud of his toughness. You know, I, I reminded him of, you know, red wine and, and, and the toughness that red wine had to have, you know, through a couple spurts in his career and, and he obviously models his game after red and wants talks and, and wants to be just like him. Um, so I'm really proud of him and his toughness. I, I'm really proud of, you know, where Gervin is in terms of, you know, on the field and, and challenging himself, uh, you know, to, to really be locked in and focused and, and, and running and playing hard. Um, he's got to continue to improve, you know, off the field in terms of taking care of his body, you know, something that Coach Reed's really been pressing with our kids is being in that training room and, and, and living in there. It's an area that he has to continue to, to work at. And that's part of growing and maturing as a player. You know, it's not just on the field is what everyone's talk about. There's so much stuff off the field that really puts into becoming great. Uh, um, and that's an area that we're really pushing him to really take care of his body. Uh, but proud of him after the last two games and he really got it out. Uh, Bubba. In terms of Bubba, you know, obviously you guys see the plays he makes, uh, but him and I know the plays that, you know, that he's he doesn't make or where, you know, he is struggling a little bit. We've had talks about that. The greatest thing about Bubba is that he's very self-aware. Uh, he understands and knows when he makes mistakes. Um, so, you know, the, big, the best thing Bubba's done early is he's really played extremely hard. Now, he has not been right all the time, and – 
people are going to praise all the good things he's done and he's done good things, but there's so much more improvement in terms of his eye discipline, um, his discipline in techniques, his discipline in foot pattern, his discipline in doing things the Miami defensive way. And that's what we're really pushing him to do more of and get better at in the last, you know, last six weeks. The biggest part, the problem, again, the good and bad of Miami is that everyone wants to, you know, hoop and holler, you know, when, when, when things are good. Um, but they don't, they forget that, you know, Bubba and Bubba Bolden situation, he's only really played nine true games. If you really kind of incorporate the three last year where he was playing 30, 40 snaps and then the six this year, you know, and, you know, whatever he did at his previous stop, he's still a player who is in that learning part of his career and development. The best part about it is, I know you guys don't, you know, y'all pump it up like, you know, oh, get excited and pom-poms and all that. And I get it, but the best part about it is Bubba knows that. Bubba knows where he's at, you know, in terms of his progression and development and understands that he's got so much to improve. I mean, he said the best, the best comment man that you did the other day, yesterday we we're talking. He goes, I, I hear all the good stuff. I need to hear the bad stuff. I need to hear what I need to get better at. And when you got a player like that, it understands that, it knows that, and it wants that, you got a shot at having a great player. And he's not going to settle for just being good or okay. He wants to be great. Thanks, Coach. Coach, last one for you is from Susan miller Degnan of the Miami Herald. Susan, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Um, going back to Amari, just wondering how you get him, you know, to not be fearful, basically, to make a hard tackle now, because I could understand him really getting in his head now. It's a great question, Susan. Um, you know, I think you got to, it's like anything. You got to put a lot of emphasis and focus into your technique and trust it to remove the fear of whatever you're doing. And for Amari, it's continuing to stress, you know, attacking as low as we can, even on a 5'7", five, 5'8", five, receiver. It doesn't matter. And keeping our eyes up. Um, it's not being gun shy. You know, you can't get gun shy. It is what it is. It's the game. It's the situation. Uh, you got to continue to play the game, you know, as hard as you can and, and just, you know, play the cards you're dealt, but we're going to continue to work at it. We worked at it today, again, today, um, in terms of striking low and, and we work on it every day. Um, but you know, the biggest thing you got to do is have confidence in what we're doing you know, try to clean up the technique of lifting the head a little bit more uh, and then just, you know, keep doing what you're doing. I, like I said, at the end of the day, I hope that we find a way to change the rule a little bit. I know Coach Diaz has talked about it. Um, I'd like to see the emphasis more on offensive players as well. There's a lot of emphasis, in my opinion. I don't think there's enough emphasis of, you know, ball carriers ducking their head into defenders. Um, but I know this, if we're trying to protect the college brain, the human, you know, the college athlete's brain, we got to we got to protect not only the offensive college player's brain, but we got to protect the defensive college player's brain. And they both are equal. And I think if we're going to make an emphasis on defense about it, which I'm all for and agree that it needs to be fixed. And I also think that when ball carriers lower their head, you know, on offense into a defensive player, I think it should be called the same if this is what it's really about. Um, but for Amari, we're going to continue to, to try to work at it and, and practice it and, and, and trust in our technique to remove the fear or the hesitation, Susan. Coach Bonda, thanks for spending a few minutes with us today and good luck the rest of the week in practice. Appreciate you guys. Stay safe. Make sure you go out and vote.